I'm a sucker for a good book, especially anything resembling epic tales of bravery, strength, growth, and resilience. Now, add in a little bit of romance and humor, oh boy, I'm sold. <laughs> if you're a reader of the fantasy or romance genre, you may know that Sarah J. Moss has a new book coming out at the end of the month, and a lot of us are especially excited for it. She's always written some hints in her current books that the worlds she's developed in separate series aren't so separate after all, and this book is expected to be one heck of a crossover. Now, I'm not here to give out massive spoilers, but I was inspired by the season of excitement to make a couple of bookish-themed crafts. Today's video will be about designing some swords with motifs from her series and embroidering them into a patch to be the centerpiece of a future project. If you like these designs, you can head on over to coffeecrafters.org and check out our graphics for sale. Today I'm using my embroidery machine with them, but they would be great to hand stitch, print out on a Cricut machine and make a sticker, or use as a laser engraver, or even just to print out and color in or practice watercoloring. All right, with that, I'm going to grab myself a hot cup of motivation, roll up my sleeves, and get to work. To start out, I actually came to the realization that I have never drawn a sword before, and from my initial play sketching, I decided that maybe I should do some googling and figure out some good proportions to draw from. Now, if you Google basic sword dimensions like I did, you might find a whole bunch of people arguing about what is a basic sword. Uh, instead, try to decide what type of sword that you're interested in, like a broadsword, greatsword, katana, or any other kind of sword type that's inspiring to you. I decided to go with the greatsword proportion, but it's a fantasy sketch, so some of the fun designs I'm going to add in a little later is gonna maybe throw some things off. But that's okay, because this is not something an Illyrian is going to rely on during battle. Now that I've got some proportions done, I decided to go with a few different motifs on each sword. On the blade, I chose three stars for a court of thorns and roses, lightning for crescent city, and flames for throne of glass. On the pommel, I went with mountains, a wolf head, and the eye of Lena. Now for some fun, I decided the cross guard should represent those with some impressive wingspans in the book. So, of course, some bat wings, angel wings, and then antlers. Otherwise, I decided to change up the grips and the blade designs to just add a little bit of variance between each blade, and then I was done. And now is the part of the video that I have to give thanks to Auntie Christine. She takes my fun sketches and then spends a whole bunch of time digitizing them so that you and I can both use the SVGs or PNG files that you can find online. So, thank you so much, Auntie Christine. Okay, now we're into the crafty bit. How I used my embroidery machine to make a patch out of these designs. I'm not going to go over the computer design portion only because many of you will likely have a different sewing machine from me or a different embroidering machine and probably use a different software. So I'll instead just give you a few different tips. The first is you should plan to make some test patches because things, you know, might go wrong. Second, I would pre-fill a whole bunch of bobbins with thread so that you don't have to pause your design to go refill more bobbins if you run out. Third, if your design is complicated, I suggest you go bigger rather than smaller for your whole patch dimension. And fourth, if things go wrong, it is totally okay to walk away and come back tomorrow. Sewing is frustrating, and embroidering on a machine can be even more frustrating. <laughs> Initially, I wanted to make three patches with fun quotes from the series for each sword, but when my machine went to start embroidering the swords, I found they were too small to do well, and it ended up eating a whole bobbin of thread. Oh, I had to go bigger. Now, the project I've got in mind to put this patch on is a pretty plain on the outside, so a big old patch isn't something that's going to be a problem to position, so I went with the maximum size that my hoop could allow. In total, my machine took about an hour and 45 minutes to embroider this patch. Now, did it go perfectly? Absolutely not. Here's a clip of me being very confused while my machine embroiders the last sword in its plan. literally have no idea why it's doing that. It was fine for two whole swords of complicated. And right now it's like it's... 
I am unsure. I am unsure about what it's trying to do. It has to be where the stars are. something new? No, we're not. I just got excited. This is a lot of, a lot of thread it's using to make a bunch of white here. It's like it just woke up. I, mean, I don't think it's broken because it wouldn't be able to move. Oh my god, not again. <gasps> what are you doing, friend? Well, this is gonna be the fluffiest sword, that's for sure. Why is it doing it this way? Did all that for filler? Holy cow! Why? Whoa! Oh, don't start again. What on earth? You know, I've never seen a sewing machine have a conniption before, but... I guess there's a first time for everything. To be fair, we still have many stitches to go. Just in this color, we should have 13,776. We're not even at 10,000 yet. And I'm a little concerned that we're gonna have a thousand stitches of just this weird I don't understand what's happening. I've never seen it do this before in my whole life. So, enjoy! I'll just keep it rolling until it breaks or it finishes. Whatever it's doing right now. Oh, yeah. Something broke! Let's see what's going on. Well, this is not broken. It's, it's pretty taut. And then underneath here, ooh, can you see? Focus. There's not like a, a wad of um, floss stuck under there. So I don't really know what is broken it thinks is broken. So we're just going to hit start again. See the tabby? Oh, okay. It just wanted some uh, emotional support. I understand. Same. I, I like emotional support. Boy, howdy. That's the fluffiest of the swords. Look at This is the flat, right? The other two are completely flat. And that thing is thickeroni with cheese. Why? At least we're back to the regularly scheduled program, so. Yay! Regardless of that oddity, uh, I was pretty happy with the overall design. So the final step is to trim up all those threads and then cut out the patch. To get everything trimmed up, I used a tweezer that has a rounded tip and a little bit of an L shape to it and a very sharp pair of small shears. You just 
pull a little bit with the tweezer and then snip as close to the piece as you can without cutting all of the other embroidery. For the whole patch cutout, I pulled the excess stabilizer off and then added some good tension to the fabric as I carefully cut along the outside edge of the stitching with my fabric scissors. Go very slow at this part. You do not want to cut through your patch and then have to start this whole thing over. And with that, my patch is done and ready to add some character and inside jokes to any garment or bag that I want. Now, in case you don't know me, I'm Auntie Sarah from Coffee Craft, and I hope that I inspired you to craft something today with your own two hands. If you think I was successful and you liked this video, please join our crafty community by hitting that like button and subscribing to our channel. And again, if you did like these designs and you want a copy for yourself, remember to head on over to coffeecrafters.org or look for some links in the description below. Thanks again for watching today's video, and I look forward to seeing what we can craft together next time. Okay, bye-bye.